This is Andrew Divoff, the Wishmaster. And you are now entering Cinema Chop Shop. Enjoy your day. <laughs> hey. What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, the, and the subscribe button. So today we're going to review A Quiet Place, day one. I've been looking forward to this movie. This is the prequel to A Quiet Place. This movie is starring Lupita Nyong'o. She is the main freaking character. And also we have Joseph Quinn. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o's character is named Sam. And then Joseph Quinn's character's name is Eric. So let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty. So the story follows Lupita Nyong'o as she tries to find her way through the city as the first day of the the events that created the quiet place as they kind of come into fruitation and they start to happen we have this unfolding and then them learning about how the how the creatures react to sound and how how to survive and basically Lupita Nyong'o's character kind of going on a side quest if you will because she has trials and tribulations of her own she has things that she's going through in her life and it kind of took this movie in a different direction a direction that honestly i wasn't really thinking that we we're going to go there the one thing i will say about this movie is that i don't think it's as good as the other two quiet places but as a prequel it's pretty damn good uh, from a movie standpoint but there was things in this movie where i felt like they were just lacking I felt like there was things just missing i really thought that um the African guy, I forgot his name. He was in Gladiator. Uh, this Desmond Hansu. I don't know how to say his name, but bro, I thought that he was gonna be our second lead in the movie, based off of the trailer alone. And even when he's in the movie, he's really compelling. I, I had a connection with him, and then he kind of just went his own way, and we don't see him again until the end of the movie, and then. Lupita's all by herself with her damn cat. And then eventually we stumble across Joseph Quinn's character. And then they start to kind of have a connection. And then we're asked as the audience to care about this new character that was introduced to us in the kind of in the middle of the movie. Now, to me, that was a big gripe because usually um, the co-star or the, you know, the second lead in the movie, usually that person gets introduced pretty early on. This kid, this guy waltzed in in the middle of the movie and, and we're asked to kind of care about him. Okay, fine. But also his motive, his motive for the things that he does, the, the motive behind him kind of lingering around Lupita's character, like that to me didn't really make sense. Um, especially during a time like this. There's complete and utter chaos going around. People are dying. Everybody wants to go home. And you have Lupita Nyong'o's character grasping onto this side quest that she's trying to get done. And he technically doesn't have any skin in the game. Like he has, there's no reason for him to want to to do this with her, to do this side quest. With, there's nothing holding him back. There's nothing making him do that. She gave him several opportunities to leave and go do his own thing, and he chose to stick with her. Sure, fine, whatever. All right. Um, and even Lupita's uh, motives, although like the motives when they're introduced in the movie they're kind of like what the fuck are we doing here like why this and i mean at the end of, at the end of the movie you get an explanation for why lupita's character had those motives and it makes sense you get what i'm saying uh when you take it from a like when you really deep dive into it, you think of it from a psychological standpoint i completely understand it but from the standpoint of like storytelling and really trying to just tell a cohesive story and and make it appeal to the audience I, as an audience member i'm gonna be honest with you like that that motive kind of didn't make it, it wasn't doing it for me you know and i mean eventually you get the full circle and at the end you kind of really understand the meaning and the significance behind that side quest but at the same time i think that they maybe should have did a better job conveying that a little bit earlier because the whole time you're sitting there wondering like why is this so important why does this matter? And it, and it really makes you not like her character. And because she's putting people's lives in danger for like something that seems really minuscule. And honestly, it's, I see why she wanted to go on the quest alone. But the fact that you had, you made her drag somebody else along during this movie, 
it kind of it kind of it kind of took it down a notch for me. Uh, another negative aspect I had about this movie is the fact that I really thought that we were going to get more of a backstory to the aliens. You know, they just kind of crashed and they just started wreaking havoc, and that's it. That's all. Uh, and also, I wanted to kind of figure out more along the lines of like how were people able to figure out about the the noise element to it. You know, I thought it was really unique that this movie is set in New York. And New York has this huge noise factor. It's a very noisy city. And all of a sudden, by one day, it becomes the quietest city in the world. And I, I thought that was really an interesting aspect. And I really want to look more about how did the government quiet the city down, other than a huge amount of the population getting picked off, obviously. But I don't know. Like I felt like it should have been, they should have went more into detail about how they discovered this. I also feel like this movie didn't really do as good with the suspense as the other two movies. Uh, I feel like the other two movies really, really nailed home the suspense. And this movie tries to mimic that in a way, but it, I don't feel like it succeeds in the way that it really thought it did. You know, uh, Overall, Lupita does an amazing job. And honestly, another person that does an amazing job is Frodo. And you're sitting there wondering, like, who, the f who, who is Frodo? Frodo was Luita's cat, and I applaud them for actually using a real cat and not a CGI cat because that was that's the one thing that's been bothering me about film lately. You watch film and you see CGI animals, and I'm like, why don't you just get a real damn animal? Like, I don't understand why you have to CGI this animal, or they'll have the animal and then the animal just walking next to the person becomes CGI. Uh, it's just ridiculous to me. It's it's really really dumb when I see stuff like that happen. So shout out to them for having a real cat. That cat had attitude like a motherfucker too. The cat was mad as hell the whole movie. But shout out to him, dude. He stole the show. Frodo stole the damn show. But anyway, um, a lot of people are probably going to get irritated with the cat too. But the cat's doing cat shit. Like you can't even get mad at a cat for being a damn cat. Like. But you can get mad at the people for expecting a cat not to be a cat. You know what I mean? Um, it's Again, I, I thought the movie was good, but it just had some very blaring, blaring problems. And it, But overall, it's still a good movie. It's a, it's a well-shot film. The, the cinematography is fantastic. The, the, the shots that they have, the burning carnage, the chaos, it's really excellent. Um, the, the little... The, even Lupita walking through the empty city is amazing. And then the final sequence um, of Lupita in the middle of the street at the end of the movie, psh, fantastic. Um, that's I thought that was a really cool scene as well, too. And the, the people that did the audio for that, on point, on point. But I don't know. It's just, it's just something about this movie that's just not making me rave about it more, you know? And I feel like the only way that I'm going to be able to really go into that nitty gritty is if I kind of go into spoilers. So if you do not want to be spoiled, I would recommend logging off right now because we're about to get on the full-blown spoilers. So you heard it, man. You already been warned spoilers are coming. So in this movie, the thing that bothered me the most was that Lupita Nyong'o's character really wanted a slice of pizza. And I'm watching this whole movie. I'm like, what the fuck is so important about this fucking slice of pizza? You know that it has some sort of significant value, but you're just like, it's fucking pizza. The end of the world is happening. You have these damn monsters running around killing people. And now you've dragged this little white boy in and you have him going with you to get a slice of fucking pizza. It sounds fucking ridiculous. You guys have risked your life a handful of times over some freaking pizza. And then it turns out that it has significant value because before she died, she made she wanted to have one more slice of pizza from the specific restaurant that her and her dad used to go to when they were younger. And I feel like although us as the audience, we knew that this pizza must have some sort of significant value. I feel like them holding out on it and then basically waiting till almost the end of the third act to tell you that. I feel like it was kind of not anticlimactic, but it was kind of pointless right like it was like oh you should have told me that sooner so i didn't feel like the like lupita's character is just a selfish ass woman who's taking somebody there and bitching and complaining about uh freaking pizza you know like i thought I, 
to, it just didn't make sense to me. I just thought it was freaking ridiculous. Uh, also, freaking Joseph Quinn's character, I felt like he was kind of unlikable because one, he waltzes in in the middle out of freaking nowhere, dude. And all of a sudden, he just starts following Lupita. There's no real reason why he's following her. He just kind of like latches onto her and then doesn't want to let go. And I don't understand what's his, what his fascination with about her, what is his attraction to her. Like he just all of a sudden became super attached to her and didn't want to let go. And before that, he was doing everything dolo by itself because he came out of the sewer, out of the water. And I don't understand what was his purpose of going on that mission with her, right? I, I, I don't understand. She didn't do anything. She didn't save him. It wasn't like she owed he owed her, her his life. It was just on some regular, like, he followed the cat, found her with the cat, and then just started following her on some creepy weirdo shit. That shit didn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, I, like I said, I really wish we would have got more backstory on the characters, on the monsters. Uh, we just really got the things going overhead, and you have the freaking helicopters and all the army people going over saying, you know, be quiet, be quiet. These people are there. These monsters are attracted to sound. Um, also, we have um, the part where it's like they they also tell them like, oh, they're they can't swim, which is really interesting as well too. But here's the problem. I really wish we would have seen more of these dog fights. You know, everything just kind of happens behind the scenes on the, on a the veil. You see. All of these tanks in the middle of the street. You see helicopters knocked out of the sky. You see gun gunners like just set up on the side of the road and just left empty. You see the little uh, military SUVs with the guns on the back. All of it is just left empty, and I don't understand why we like. If this is day one, right, then we should have at least seen some of the battles. Like the battle should have been a background point of this movie, and it wasn't. You know. Um, but again, overall, I had fun with the movie. I thought the movie was, I thought the movie was good. You know, I, I didn't think it was excellent. Like the other two films, I didn't think it was like super thought provoking, but I mean, it was emotional towards the end and, you know, John, Joseph Quinn's character became a little bit more likable. The problem is it took us too long to get there. So I, if I have to give this movie a grade, it's probably going to get like a B minus for me. Uh, I mean, I think if I rewatch it again, the grade might continue to slip. But as of right now, after watching it, it's a B minus. I thought the story was okay. I think the cinematography was amazing. Lupita Nyong'o did a really fantastic job. Frodo the Cat did an amazing job. But outside of that, I mean, the story was really lacking and I had a lot of problems with it. But, hey, it is what it is. So let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below. And you are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop. Hope you guys have a magnificent day. And adios, homies. I want to play a game. Subscribe now. The choice is yours. Sitting this cinema church. <laughs>